are you? It's Jamie from Play to Learn Preschool. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know that in our video yesterday, we had promised um, to be on earlier, and we had promised to be on um, with some organization tips and labels. And I'm so, so sorry, but I've been trying to work on getting the labels all editable so that I can just give them to you, and then if you want to make labels for your own center, your own areas, um, you can use them. And it is just like everything else at the beginning of the school year, taking me like twice as long as that I thought it would um, to make them editable for you. So I'm so sorry, but I didn't want to get on and show you all those awesome organization tips and then say, and here are the labels, but you can't have them. So you have to wait one more day for me. Gemma will be here tomorrow. We will show you all of our newly organized area and then I will also have the edible labels as a gift for you for watching and for being so patient. So I'm so sorry. Anyway, hello, it's so good to see you guys. I'm talking about a little bit later than normal. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. So I am here today to share with you just a quick idea or some quick um, books, some of our favorite ones to read with our students at the very beginning of the school year. And at the beginning of the school year, our goal, as we talked about yesterday and on Tuesday, is really just to make a good relationship with our students. So we do not try to do any um, content study. We don't try to do any direct instruction. We don't really work on any skills at the beginning of the year. We really spend all of our time making a relationship and a connection with our students. And the books that we read with them, again, are not meant to like teach them um, you know, skills or apples or anything like that. We just really want them to love school. We want them to fall in love with coming to school. And so that's what we were gonna share with you. I know um, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups for preschool teachers and I know a lot of people are like, I'm gonna read The Kissing Hand, which is a, it's a sweet book. And I used to read it with my second graders, you know, at the beginning of the year. But I don't ever read that book or I don't, I did it one time and then I thought, this is not a good idea with my preschoolers because if you have any students, if you're familiar with the book, uh, it's about a little raccoon named Chester and he misses his mom so much while, she, while he's at school. And so she gives him a sweet little kissing hand and then he remembers that his mom loves him. But at preschool, I do not want to remind them how much they miss their moms. I don't, not on the first day. <laughs> and so I decided that's a terrible book to read to my preschoolers on the first day because the kids who are maybe like on the, the edge, like, oh, I think I'm okay here, but I'm not sure. I could burst into tears at any moment. It's really not decided yet. I don't want to give them a reason to cry, you know? And the kids who are for sure crying are not going to be comforted by the fact that Chester is also sad about missing his mom. And then the kids who are happy, it's just a little bit too long for them. <laughs> so these are our favorite books to read at the beginning of the school year. Last year we shared some beginning of the school year books and then I've got new ones for you this year. So options, options. These are of course some of our very favorite beginning of the school year books. Pete the Cat, Groovy Buttons, Rockin' in His School Shoes, I Love My White Shoes. Oh gosh, I've got the camera on so you can see the words and it's all weird for me. And um, we love these books. I love to play the music for those stories. The kids like to dance and then they go home with a little song. It's perfect. Um, but our returning students have all heard all of these books because we read them almost until the pages fell out last year. So this year I started with some new books and I'm gonna share what they are. Are you familiar with this book? Do you know about the nuts? Okay, this is, the, this is gonna be your new favorite book if you're not familiar with it. It came out probably two years ago, so it's not new new, um, but it's about a little nut named Hazel. And in this one, it's called Sing and Dance in Your Polka Dot Pants. And Hazel writes a little song um, and sing and dance in your polka dot pants, polka dot pants, polka dot pants, sing and dance in your polka dot pants. And she tries to get her mom to dance with her, not a chance. She tries to get her dad to dance with her, not a chance. She tries to get her little brother. And then in the end, she finds her grandma nut will dance with her. Adults will love this book too because it has some really funny, um, humorous things in it. For example, when she's doing her little polka dot pants um, dance, each dance has like a funny little thing, like the cha-cha chestnut and the um, the macarena, which is so so sweet. the macarena. <laughs> Only the adults will get it, but I like a book that has adult humor too, and it has a free song 
um, that you can just play on your phone or whatever, and a free uh, audio version of the book that has the music in it. At the end, you can dance to the polka dot dance, polka dot pants dance. Um, and it's, uh, there's some pictures, and again, it's all free. The book isn't free, but the downloads and the audio are free. So I love, we read this on the first day on Tuesday, and then we read it again today. And then what I like to do, of course, the kids are all going home, and they're like, polka dot pants, polka dot pants, and the parents are like, what are you saying? And they're like, I said, polka dot pants, dance, and the parents are like, what? <laughs> and so I love to then follow it up with a quick text or an email to the parents and say, have your kids been singing the polka dot pants dance song? Um, here's the link, you can play it for them at home. And then I often have parents who are like, thanks a lot, you know, that song now is stuck in my head. I'm like, join the club. <laughs> so the nuts are super duper cute. It's the same author, Eric Litwin, as Pete the Cat. So if you kids love Pete the Cat, they're gonna like this one too. And then there are a number of other nut books. This is called The Nuts Keep Rolling. Um, super duper cute. And again, each one has a free song and a dance that you can download and play for your kids. So I will leave a link. You know I didn't have it all together before I went live, but I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. It's the first week of school. And then what I wanted to show you is the book we read on the second day of school. We actually did two books with our kids, um, our older kids on the second day. So I read one of these books during our morning meeting because we were just talking about class rules and expectations and routines and those kinds of things. And um, I think I put you know, on my themes for September that our September theme is called Books Are Great, We Love Books. And truly that's just a disguise for I have to teach them all the routines and procedures and I'm gonna do it using books. Um, it's not really like a unit of study where we have content. Um, it's just we're just reading lots of books and talking about routines. So uh, some years I call it, you know, going to school. Some years I call it whatever. It's just basically like learning the routines. So the book that we read, have you read this one? It's called We Don't Eat Our Classmates. It is about a little Tyrannosaurus Rex named Penelope. And she has a problem making friends with um, the other kids at her school because they're so delicious. So she goes to school on the very first day and as soon as she walks into the classroom, look here, her parents pack her 300 tuna sandwiches for lunch. And as soon as she goes into her classroom, she's so worried because all of her class, they're all children. Ooh. And you know what Penelope thinks about children? She thinks they're delicious. So she ate them all. And the teacher, Mrs. Noodleman says, Penelope, we don't eat our classmates. Please spit them out at once. And so she did. And so then she spits them all out and they're all covered with T-Rex slobber. It's a hysterical book. It's not good for your younger three-year-olds on their first day, but my returning students, this was perfect for them. And then we followed up with a little lesson about how we can be nice to our friends. Do we eat our friends? And they're like, no, of course not. I'm like, well, what can we do You know, if we wanna be friends? And they said things like, we can play together. We can, you know, I said, what if you wanna touch your friends? You know, how do we touch them? And they're like, oh, you know, we could high five, we could give hugs, we could pat them on the back, we could ask, you know, do you wanna give me a hug? And we talked, it just led itself to this really nice discussion about good ways to interact with our classmates because we don't eat our classmates. And they, of course, think that that is absolutely hysterical um, and it's just a good it was just a good little way and a good way to segue into that discussion about how to be a good friend in our classroom so we read this during our morning meeting again I wouldn't read it with I'm not gonna read it with the younger ones tomorrow it's a little bit too long um, but my pre-k kids did great with it and then in the afternoon during story time I followed <laughs> I followed up with groovy Joe ice cream and dinosaurs are you familiar with groovy Joe Another Eric Litwin book, so it's Pete the Cat, The Nuts, and then Groovy Joe. And in this one, um, he orders the dog, uh, Groovy Joe, orders a tub of Hagen Dogs ice cream. <laughs> and he starts eating it. And of course, there's a song to go with it free that you can download. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. And roar! There's another dinosaur that stomps into the room. He glares at the ice cream and took out a spoon. He put on a bib. He pulled up a chair. What did Joe say? It's awesome to share. 
and everyone saying, love my doggy ice cream. And so in this story, he shares his doggy ice cream with three different dinosaurs. And I like to read this one on the same day that I read We Don't Need Our Classmates because the kids, some of them like, hey, our book this morning had a dinosaur in it. And of course, I'm starting to set that um, idea in their mind that when they read, they need to think, what does this remind me of? And they're already starting, of course, because they're returning students. And we've been doing this all year last year. They're already starting to think, oh wait, this book, it reminds me of this other book that we read because they're both, they both have dinosaurs as characters. And I'll introduce that word to them. You're right. Both of these books have dinosaur characters in them. And they're both about how to be a good friend. In this one, we talked about how Penelope should not eat her classmates about how she should be kind and gentle with her hands and try to play with them. And then in this one, Groovy Joe was a really good friend because he shared his ice cream with the dinosaurs. And so then we're just continuing that discussion about what does it look like to be a good friend in our classroom. And so those are the books that we read the first week of school. Um, they get them up and moving. I play the music on my phone while we're reading the book so they can dance. And then I always follow it up with an email or a text to the parents just to say, this is the book that we read and your kids loved it at school. Why don't you um, download it on your phone or open it up and listen to it in the car on the way home or you know, tonight before bed when you're asking your kid, what did you do at school today? Maybe you're having a hard time coming up with it. You can say, oh, your teacher sent me the song. Do you wanna to listen to it together and you can tell me more? Sometimes that will be enough to get the kids like, oh, that's right, we read this great book and they'll start talking about their day. So those are some of the books that we read for the first week of school. You guys are so sweet, I know. Erica, I love books that have really good like adult humor. Like the kids are not gonna get hog and dogs ice cream, right? But the adults will, and it's the same in the Nuts book. Um, like the brother's name is Wally, Wally Nut, Walnut. It's just hysterical, and the kids don't get it, but I just, you know, when you have to read a lot of kids' books, which I love, but when you have to read a lot of them, it's like good to have some, like, ah, that's funny. <laughs> well done, Eric Lewin. <laughs> um, you know, just a little adult humor in there. <laughs> so those are the books that we read for the first week of school. I promise I will be back tomorrow with organization tips, all of these little, ooh, ooh, right here, all of these little printable labels for everything. I'm working on making them editable. They're done. I just wanna make sure that everything works for you so that you can use them if you want to in your classroom. And Gemma and I will show you around in our cupboards and kind of talk you through this five-step process that we use when we're organizing um, and trying to get everything ready for the new school year. So I know, it's so funny, right? They're great books. I hope you guys had a great day if you had school today or if you're still in the process of planning, I hope you are doing well. And thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow with some organization tips and labels. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.